Hey everyone, in the spirit of this video, I'm going to keep the intro short. In this video, I'm going to go over some really fantastic hotkeys and shortcuts inside of the Unreal Engine editor that I find to be super useful. And I'm also going to cover some bonus tips that aren't really hotkeys or shortcuts that are too useful to not cover in this video. With that out of the way, let's get started. You can group objects by selecting both of them and pressing Ctrl G. They now act as a single object whenever you move, rotate, or scale them inside of the level editor. If you have a group but you want to move a single item in it, just right click on an object in the group, go down to groups, and then select unlock. I can now move the objects individually and when I'm ready to treat them as a group again, I right click on one of the objects, go to groups, and click lock. If I want to hide something inside of the level editor, I can press H. If I want to unhide everything in the editor, I can press Ctrl H. If I want to move an object in the editor, but I want the camera to follow where I'm moving that object, all I have to do is hold Shift while I click and drag on that object's gizmo. If I want to focus my view on an object quickly, I can select it and press F on the keyboard. You can switch between transform modes quickly by using the W key for translation, the E key for rotation, and the R key for scaling. You can also switch between these modes by pressing the spacebar. You can snap an object to the floor by pressing the end key. You can snap an object's pivot to the floor by pressing alt and the end key. You can snap an object's bounds to the floor by pressing shift and the end key. You can move the pivot of an object with alt and the middle mouse button. If you have grid snapping enabled, it will snap the pivot to the grid. It's a great way to offset your axis of rotation. Hold V while translating an object to enable vertex snapping. Another useful tip is to create a hotkey for the paste here action. To do so, go to edit, editor preferences, keyboard shortcuts, and search paste here. And then you can give it a new binding. I will give it backslash. You can give it whatever you want, whichever you, whatever you want to use that you don't have bound to something else. Now, if I were to click this cube, copy it, I'll go ahead and paste it with control V. And now I'll move it over here. Now, since I have this cube copied, let's say I want to paste it over here next to this cube and it's a long distance and I want to move an object and I don't want to click and drag and fly it over. All I have to do is select the object nearest to where I want to paste it and hit the backslash key on my keyboard. And it will paste the object in. You can use F2 to rename pretty much anything that can be renamed in the engine. It's much faster and easier than right clicking. You can break blueprint connections by alt clicking on them. B and the left mouse button creates a branch. S in the left mouse button creates a sequence. F in the left mouse button creates a for each loop. P in the left mouse button creates a begin play. D in the left mouse button gives you a delay. G in the left mouse button gives you a gate. M in the left mouse button gives you a multi-gate. N in the left mouse button gives you a do n times node. O in the left mouse button gives you a do once node. If you're anything like me, you'll often find yourself with some extremely messy blueprints. An easy trick to fix them up fairly fast is something you're probably already aware of where you can highlight multiple nodes, right click, go to alignment, and choose a way to align them. But what you might not know is that each and every one of these has a hotkey. Straighten connections and align left are the two I use most often. Here I'll use Q to straighten the connections on my nodes and I'll use Shift A to align my nodes to the left. You can use Control F to quickly open a find results menu in any blueprint. A super useful window at that. When you copy nodes inside of the blueprint editor, they are copied to your computer as text, meaning you can paste them into a text file and send it to anyone you want to share your blueprints with, or they can then copy the text out of the file and paste them into their blueprint editor. One in the left mouse button gives you a 1D constant. Two in the left mouse button gives you a 2D constant. Three in the left mouse button gives you a 3D constant. S 
in the left mouse button gives you a scalar parameter, V in the left mouse button gives you a vector parameter, M in the left mouse button gives you a multiply node, A in the left mouse button gives you an add node, T in the left mouse button gives you a texture sample node, U in the left mouse button gives you a texture coordinate node. I have six more bonus tips which didn't really fit into any other category that I wanted to share with you all in this video. First one is that you can use these transform inputs or any input that takes in a number as a calculator. For example, for the location, I could set it to 1 plus 1, which would give me 2, of course. It's a super useful little feature that not everyone knows about. One thing to keep in mind is that unfortunately these do not follow the order of operations, so you'll want to keep things as simple as you can, otherwise you might find yourself getting incorrect results. You can give a folder a custom color by right clicking on it and then selecting set color. Let's give this one uh, some pinkish purple color. And now our folder has been colored. It's a great way to organize things better in your content browser. This next one is something I wish I learned much sooner than I did. Whenever you delete and replace references or move something from one folder to another in your content browser, Unreal Engine creates redirectors. And these can make things pretty messy, they're invisible, and they can cause issues later on when maybe you want to go back into a folder where you had something that was once named a certain thing, maybe you even then renamed it, but now you're back in the original folder and you want to give something that name again, but the engine won't let you because there's a redirector with that name pointing to the object that you moved and then renamed. It's these kinds of situations and they build up over time and it can get very annoying. So a best practice is to whenever you delete, rename, or remove something in your content browser or place references in any way, right click on your folder and then click fix up redirectors in folder. It'll make sure everything stays clean on the invisible side of your content browser. There's an awesome feature that I just learned about while doing research for this video. It is the Boolean search bar. You can actually search for multiple things at once inside of Unreal Engine by putting a vertical pipe between whatever it is you're searching for. I could search for blueprint at a vertical pipe, which is that symbol on the backslash key that you type when you hold down shift. And I could also search for material. And now all of my objects that are a that have blueprint in their name or have material in their name show up. You can also separate out your search terms with an and symbol, which allows you to, hmm, let's say, search for every object that has both new and blueprint in its name, but they can be separated. There can be things in between them and they don't have to be in that order. Finally, last but not least, another feature that I really wish I'd known much sooner and another one that I only learned about when I was researching for this video is the add feature or content pack option under this add option in the content browser. You can actually use it to add the content packs or features that it that Unreal Engine presents to you on startup to a project such as the third person example project in blueprint or c plus plus or even the starter content content pack we can add the starter content to our project now and if we check our content browser well here it is it's much easier than creating a new project and migrating everything over which is what i used to do every single time i created an empty project and realized i wanted something like the first person example project or the third person example project inside of it. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. There are more videos on the way, and I'll see you in the next video. And I almost forgot, the Discord server is linked down in the description. Come join, check it out. Love to see you there.